Dark Deception, my favorite multi mascot horror game. It's been through so much, from long development to Twitter hate bait. Now, Dark Deception isn't a terrible game. In fact, there are games out there that are way, in fact, much worse than Dark Deception. But it has gameplay qualities that make the game fun to replay. Not all the levels have that enjoyment to replay. You got very boring levels like Barely Buried, which is literally a chore to beat. And you got levels like Mascot Mayhem, which everyone can't stop replaying because it has everyone's favorite character in it. All the levels in this list are going to be ranked by level design, gameplay, and character mechanics, which is probably something that would be carried on in my Escape to Backham's level ranking series. Other than that, let's get into the list. Number 8, Barely Buried. Barely Buried is the longest and most time consuming level in the entire game. You're wondering why Stranger Sewers isn't last in the list. Well, at least Stranger Sewers has some replayability, while the bare level is just boring. You'll get to the point of the level where you're S ranking or just playing for fun and tell yourself, when is it over? The level's pacing feels awfully slow, slower than the rest of the levels. At least in Mascot Mayhem, there's activity going on. All Barely Buried has is just exploding teddies. Even those feel slow. Speaking of exploding teddies, can that one teddy and Zoe one stop having confusing AI? It's very mean. Barely Buried takes place in the caves, and they're technically a 50 50 type area. Zone 2 contains the most lackluster cave environment I've ever seen in a video game. But what pisses me off is that most of the caves during transition parts of Zone 1 and 2 look much more interesting to look at. We've pretty much been robbed, and I don't even know how that even happened. While Zone 2 had some lackluster environment, Zone 3 brought one of the cool zones in the entire game. It looks absolutely amazing. The lighting and visuals are so stunning to look at, though the maze gameplay is still pretty mid. At least we've been gifted the speed boost ability from one of the easiest boss fights in the entire game to at least enhance the gameplay. By the way, both boss fights require you to run around in a circle. I know, really interesting gameplay idea. <laughs> Number 7, Stranger Sewers. Stranger Sewers is the first level of Chapter 3, and it takes place in, well, you guessed it, the sewers. At least the sewers aren't that time consuming as the mom bear level, but it's still not a fun level. The environment is very dull, and the Dark Deception Enhanced update made it them look even worse. If you didn't know what they looked like before, this is what the sewers looked like in pre-enhanced. The sewers are now very grey, and it's really sad to look at. It's like the life's been taken away from it. Not only that this affected Zone 1 lighting, but it also affected Zone 2 lighting as well. Now, there is a line that Beer says when you enter the zone. She says, hiding. Beers, they're gone. They're not any. Where, where, what shadows are you talking about? They're not there anymore. <laughs> now, I do love the Dread Ducky's design. In fact, they're one of my favorite character designs in Dark Deception. Oh, and Dude Ducky is pretty cool too. His boss fight's also cool as well. I mean, look at them. They look adorable. I just wish there was more roaming ducks rather than just one in each zone, just, you know, sitting and hiding with the fake ducks. Which is Stranger Sewer's main issue with the gameplay aspect. Like, come on, I want something to run from. Yes, Stranger Sewer's maze gameplay is very mid. I don't really like being forced to open a door and wait 3 seconds. Yes, 3 seconds is a long time. I do like the sharp placement in the level. They're all evenly spread out and not too spread out. And they're also organized, which is something I wish all Dark Deception levels do. Number 6, Torment Therapy. Torment Therapy is a level I didn't expect to be a thing in Dark Deception. My new nurses were going to be a thing in Dark Deception long ago, but I didn't think they would look like that. Yeah, I was hoping for a darker and scarier hospital looking environment, as well as a terrifying nurse sign. But I'm glad they kept the head bags. But I guess if you need the story to make sense, you gotta go with a different approach. I just wish you looked like a horror character. So, Torment Therapy has an interesting setting. We all agree that Zone 1 has a better looking environment than Zone 2. I don't know what Zone 2 was supposed to be. It had parts of the asylum setting, and the rest is. I, I don't know what to make of it. Zone 1 was clear that it was a hospital. A very clean hospital that I. Yeah, I don't know how to explain. What, what, what was Torment Therapy supposed to go? <laughs> Torment Therapy is a fun level if you don't use telekinesis, at least in Zone 1. In Zone 2, using telekinesis makes the zone boring, while not using it makes Zone 2 absolutely annoying to play. 
and also boring. I believe the moving saw traps are kind of the issue. There is no indication of whether they will appear up unlike the static saw traps where it plays a sound cue whenever they would appear. Zone 1 is easily better, especially the environment you're playing in. It's really beautiful. The Matrix boss fight is redeemable, but there is currently an annoying bug in it. It's where you primal fear the nurse that's on top of the ambulance, and instead of knocking the nurse down onto the road, it just makes your syringe disappear. And also, this technically isn't a bug, but sometimes the ambulances will no longer spawn. But I think it's intentional, and it's kind of annoying since there's technically a dead end, and chapter 4 promised no dead ends. Now, I did say this before, I'm not really a fan of the Reaper nurse design, but at least they fit Torment Therapy's aesthetic. I just wish we got something a bit more darker, and maybe not too suggestive. Number 5, Crazy Carnival. Crazy Carnival is a level in fact enjoy more than Torment Therapy. It's also the best level in chapter 3, but it's not the best level in the entire game. Zone 1 is very boring. The map is very huge and there are a few shards on the map and it makes it quite unnecessary in terms of gameplay. It's like doing a chore, and I hate chores just as like I hate playing the zone. The comms car ASMR just makes it even worse. Zone 2 is better in all means, but it's still quite annoying to complete without telekinesis. Oh wait. However, Zone 2 looks visually nice, and I do gotta say the same for Zone 1. So, speaking of telekinesis, is it just me, or is Crazy Carnival actually better with telekinesis? Which is odd to say, because this happens to be the only level in Dark Deception outside of Barely Buried that telekinesis is actually plays as a fair mechanic. And it will speed up the process of actually playing Crazy Carnival instead of collecting Sharper Shard and waiting for the game to freeze because of a graphical error. <laughs> the Glyph Clown boss fight is the only part of the entire level that doesn't feel like you're taking a long time to complete. And it's actually well to get a put boss fight, if you're playing a normal that is. It is kind of boring on easy mode. Now, I don't know what's up with the Clown Glyph's design or character model, but it used to look really good. But due to some clipping issues, instead of remodeling the character itself, the Glycon now remains the same, but without a color and a hat. I'm not sure why they decided to remove the hat. I, I don't know. It just does not look good. I wish they kept the color in the hat. I don't really mind the clipping at all anymore. I just want the hat and color back. Crazy Carnival has some insane environments. It feels so surreal, like you're walking to a circus fever gym, and it has a very cool and liminal feeling, just like other fun related environments. Number 4, Mascot Mayhem. Sure, it might be the most replayed level out in the mall, but that doesn't mean it deserves first place because Lucky the Rabbit is in it. The mascots do have creepy designs, and really cool endo designs as well. And what makes them all unique is that they all have different mechanics which fit their personality. However, they all share the same issue, which is teleportation. It's worse than Zone 2 since Hangry is able to destroy walls, plus he can teleport. And there's also two Hangrys, which equals more teleporting pigs. The environment of the theme park is okay. There should be some amusement rides in the background just to make it feel more like a theme park. Zone 2 has very tight spaces. And in fact, Hangry's mechanic is used there the most just doesn't work with the tight spaces. The goal to avoid Hangry's attack is to move away from the walls, but it doesn't really work. You're just gonna get Hangry to smash through a wall anyways. Zone 3 is the most easiest part in the entirety of Mascot Mayhem, which isn't really a good thing since video games in general are supposed to get harder the more you progress. Mascot Mayhem fails to do that by making the zones way too small. The industrial environment of the zone is really cool besides the orange lighting. Red lighting gave the factory a better feel. I just wish the zone was larger. Joy Kill, which has a cool character design, but there is no guess that Joy Kill was going to be the amalgamation of all three Joy J mascots. Since everyone during the chapter 4 hype guessed that would have been the case. The boss fight isn't all that challenging. I'd argue that the boss fight from that one Delverland Expo game has a more interesting boss fight than Joyko. Oh, by the way, Joyko has two boss fights, and the second one, in, if you could guess it, it's just running around in a circle. Number 3, Elementary Evil. Elementary Evil is the second level of Dark Deception, which carries my least favorite character the entire game. If you don't know, I don't really like Agatha. She's really annoying in every adaptation that she's in, including the fan games. 
She has a fairly cool design, but I just don't like how they mess her potential up in every adaptation ever by making her super annoying. This school has some really neat visuals. Everything looks so colorful. It really gives out the nostalgic vibes. I wouldn't say the environment is much, but Zone 2 does make the halls look much more interesting by including the ghost children behind the classroom windows, as well as adding a cafeteria room, which strangely enough, has no food buffet. The shark collecting aspect at the level is fine, especially since this is the second level of the entire game, which I think should have been the first since it's a bit easier than monkey business, but the boss fight is a bit confusing and unnecessary. I don't like Agatha being the boss in her own level. In fact, I don't think a boss fight should be included in OMG Evil at all. Dune Ducky is the one that introduced boss fights perfectly, so why ruin his reputation over Malg's own kid? Number 2, Deadly Decadence. This is the level that made a bunch of big YouTubers quit the game. So, the level got nerfed. Well, no, it still remains the same, which is what I prefer because we beat age old mechanics are meant to be difficult. The mechanic is included in other horror games, which are also difficult. Go Watchers didn't invent the Weeping Angel mechanic, but they are one of the few horror characters that did the best. Miss Delight still takes account of being the scariest Weeping Angel character in all of mascot horror or any horror in general. Delhi is a really fun level to replay. I mean, literally. Zone 2, the manor, is super reflective and very fancy, though the old lighting in Zone 2 looked a bit more natural than the newer gold lighting. The hedges outside look really cool, way better than they previously were back in pre-enhance. Daily Decadence is probably one of the few enhanced levels that got an actual upgrade instead of a downgrade. Besides the Zone 2 yellow lighting that is. Everything is so detailed and I'm impressed by the work that the manor got, especially in enhanced. The Go Watchers, which is this level's enemy, have such a creepy personality and be glad you don't see a move because it just looks silly in Monsters of Mortals. The Go Watcher is still the scariest Dark Deception monster in the entire game. I mean, just look at its face. So, Deadly does have a boss fight. It's Tide Watcher. But it tried. The level wasn't meant to have a boss fight. All it is is just running around in a circle while Phantom Mount chases you, while Titan Watcher just throws axes at you. But, however, Titan Watcher did get a design upgrade and looks way better than what it looks like in Monsters of Mortals. Number 1 Monkey Business. Monkey Business is the level in Dark Deception that started it all. It is the perfect level in the entire game, minus the brightness being turned up to enhance. It hits spaces and gruesome hotel monkeys, which are honestly adorable now if you look at them for a very long time, really fits and brings out the true 3D Pac-Man horror experience for those playing it. The murder monkeys are also a true icon in Dark Deception, while others think it's Lucky the Rabbit, which I know is not true in my view, but he is an icon in Georgia Land. The chef monkeys are a really nice touch to monkey business and explains why there's a kitchen in the middle of the hallway in the first place. It need to be studied at first but now we know why there is a kitchen. The new ceiling lights look really good compared to the old square looking lights. I just think they feel more natural in the hotel environment. Monkey business is the shortest level in the entire game but it's the most memorable of them all. Maybe in Dark Deception 2 we could revisit monkey business and see more of the hotel and maybe new hotel monsters because there's obviously more in the hotel than what was shown in the very beginning in Dark Deception 1. So that is my rankings of the Dark Deception levels, but there's still more and more chapter to be released. But for now, all we do is wait and wait and wait and wait.